It still is sort of a signature accomplishment for a president who needed a little boost and who can now point to this as an example of the good things that can happen when you work well with allies and you stay patient. And you don't have to go into this world choosing between all-out muscular foreign policy or unilateralist approaches on the one hand and passivity or isolationism on the other. It's fascinating to watch. You know, and war often is like this where an accumulation of factors builds slowly and you finally get something that's a, a quick breakthrough. What could have been the, the proximate cause is the severing of the supply lines that Gaddafi had depended on going to the West, from which he seems to have gotten some of his supplies. Fighters could come in in support of him that way. Uh, and of course, most of the rebel activity was in the East for the first three or four months of this conflict, but in the last one to two months, stepped up in the West. So you had a bit of a pincer effect or you know, a noose really tightening around Gaddafi. And then that physical noose was reinforced by international action to sanction him, to cut off his access to money, to cut off his ability to trade oil. And so there was no real hope that he could keep resources flowing into the regime either. And that probably influenced a lot of his supporters. It may or may not have influenced him. But you know, to the extent that his inner circle lost heart or began defecting in greater numbers or was unable to really coordinate battlefield activity and sort of felt dispirited and uh, got cut off, uh, that may have been part of it. And then NATO may have gotten inside the command and control loop, too. We might have even used a computer virus, for all I know. We might have taken out a couple of the radio transmitters or jammed more effectively the communications in Tripoli, because it does appear that his defenses in Tripoli were overwhelmed very quickly. Either they were surprised uh, that such rapid inroads occurred uh, by the rebels, and then that left them unprepared, or we actually physically prevented them from working together as a team. So, as you can see, I'm speculating because I think that's all we can really do at this point. But it is sort of a principle of military operations that when you get to a critical mass or a tipping point of factors, uh, you can see a rapid change on the battlefield. NATO may have to do more in this phase of stabilizing the country, helping the new transitional government uh, reach out to others providing some models for reconciliation, providing help with governance on the technical side. So uh, NATO's not done, but I think, yes, it's been vindicated in its military strategy. Well, they don't have the necessary support yet, and a big part of what they have to do is to reach out. They're going to have to try to reach out to as many Qaddafi loyalists as they can put it you know, in their hearts and heads to do. They're, they're not going to want to. The natural fact that they've seen their friends uh, and families killed by these people in recent months and that they've been exploited by this inner circle arguably for decades is not going to make them very happy about it. But they have to remember, uh, as victors often forget, that the basis for long-term peace is going to be laid largely um, with this kind of effort at reconciliation or at least uh, effort to forgive. And um, that's going to be a tough process. They're going to need some international advice as well, because the international community has the body of knowledge and experience to point out cases where it didn't go so well and victors didn't work as hard. The fact that this took five months to succeed is actually, in some ways, a blessing in disguise, or maybe even a blessing that was the deliberate result of policy, because we didn't try to help the rebels win too fast. That was partly on purpose, to give us time at the political level and at the uh, diplomatic level to establish some lines of communication with them, get to know them, make sure they understood that if, if they were going to get some things from us in the future, they were going to have to abide by certain principles and norms of behavior. And so the fact that it didn't all end in a month or two was frustrating at one level, but it actually provided us time to try to develop some communication and some influence with this rebel group. I think in the broader Arab world, with Libya being only, frankly, uh, one of the less important cases, uh, because Egypt matters a lot more, we are looking more to see the groundwork laid for long-term stability. And I think we shouldn't worry too much about short-term alliances or short-term uh, friendships. Obviously, we'd like to reach out, but it's going to be slow. You know? And as we've just seen in the last few days with Egypt and Israel, sometimes the first effects of seeing uh, Arab populations empowered 
uh, will be negative from our point of view. You know, Egypt and Israel are having a difficult time getting along right now, for example. Uh, but if we can see Arab populations feel a little more ownership of their own governments and countries, I think most of us who believe instinctively in democracy will feel like there's a good case to be made that that will help over the long term.